Hey everybody and welcome to this Algolia Getting Started Guide. In this video, we're going to help you kickstart your search with a set of cool and fun to use widgets. Those widgets initially come from our Vanilla.js instant search library, but this time we've ported them to the React world and we call it React Instant Search. The cool thing about this library is that it will allow us to build this kind of search experience in less than 15 minutes and fewer than 100 lines of code. Before jumping in, let's clear up a few details first. To follow along this video, you'll need some basic React and JSX knowledge. And we're also going to use some ES6 syntax here and there, so some familiarity with it will definitely help. You will also need to have installed on your machine npm or yarn and the create React app utility. As this is a front-end focused video, we're not going to deal with the data side of things here. So we're not going to be uploading any data to Algolia or we're not going to configure any indices. But to make things easier on your side, we have a ready to use index. So enough with the boring stuff. So let's get our hands dirty. First off, we'll generate a brand new project by using the create react app utility. It automatically installs all the dependencies necessary. A bunch of new files and folders are popping up in the newly created project. And now is a good time to import the React Instance Search package. I'm using Yarn as my package manager, but you could very well use npm if you're more comfortable with it. Here we are opening up the public folder and the index.html file. Let's do a bit of cleanup, removing some of the comments. And while we are at it, let's add the link to the generic style sheet used by our widget library. We'll also import in that folder the logo asset and the style.css file that will handle the layout and the customization of our widget for this specific project. As you can see here, nothing fancy, it's just plain old CSS. Let's rename the app. Now let's head over to the source folder. Here again, we see a bunch of files that have been automatically generated. The two important ones are the index.js and app.js. We can remove all the others to make things more readable. The index.js file is pretty uneventful. It basically just renders the app component to the DOM. Let's move to the app.js file. Here again, we do a little cleanup beforehand. Let's do a quick yarn start to run the app and see if everything goes well so far. Okay, so we have a blank page with the title of our project. For the moment, I will only import the root instant search component from react instant search slash dom. I can now add it to our main random method. And to connect it to Algolia server, I will need to fill out at a minimum these three properties API key, app ID. and the index name that you want to target. Here, we provide everything for you. In a real use case, you would find them in your Algolia dashboard or from the API. So let's move forward and add our first widget. We import the search box component and go back to the render method. This will enable us to add a search box that is plugged to Algolia and that for each keystroke will perform a query to our servers. Using the translation attribute, we can customize the placeholder text of the search box. Here I'm adding the logo to make it look nice. And finally, the class name to add our custom styling. I'm saving the file, this compiles and reloads the page. So what do we get now? A nice logo and a big large search box. I will now create a couple of React functional components for the structure and the layout of the page. So first, the sidebar. 
it's simply returning a div with a class name. This will hold the refinement widgets. Now I'm doing the same for the main content. And this one will hold the hits and a few other widgets. We can now add those two components to the render function inside a main tag. The page reloads, but nothing new appears on the screen. So let's take care of actually rendering something to the page by importing the hits component. This one deals with the hits array returned by the API. I'm adding it to the content component and it takes in a hit component props, which will take care of rendering a single hit. So we pass in a hit component, but we now have to define it. In the hit component function, we pass a hit parameter that will hold the hit data itself that we will be able to access and render inside the component. I can now use this data to render the hit image, for instance. So let's see how it looks. Nice, the image are displaying correctly and when entering a query, everything refreshed nicely. So not very exciting yet. So let's flesh out those hits. So we'll add a div that will hold uh, all the textual content of the hit. Inside of it, we'll start by adding the price, a simple div, a class name, dollar sign and hit dot price so how does this look yeah not bad let's continue the name of the product itself this is an important one as it will draw a lot of attention from the user to determine if the match with his or her query is relevant so that's where we'll use the highlight component First, we need to import it. Then, adding it to the hit content div. It takes in the attribute name and the hit. So, pretty straightforward. Yay, we got names! And when entering a query, we can now see in bold the part that matched in each name. Pretty cool for a single line component. So let's copy paste that one, but this time for the description. We just need to change the class name of the div and the attribute name of the highlight component. Boom, working perfectly. Okay, so now we're going to finish up the main right column with a couple of cool and easy to integrate widgets. To do that, we need to import them, stats, sort by, and pagination. Back to our content component. We'll add a div above the hits that will contain the stats and sort by widget. It has a class name of info. So let's start with a stats. We don't have anything to specify for that one, and it works out of the box. It shows you the number of hits for a given query and displays the ridiculously small amount of time it took to retrieve them. Let's take care of the sort by component now. This one allows you to point your queries to replica indices that will have the same data but another sorting configuration. So we define a default index, which will be the first one displayed. Then, in the item attribute, we specify inside an array all the sorting necessary, including the default one. For each one, the index name and the label for the display.
So how does this look now? You can now select the sorting, lowest first, Highest first, or well, most relevant. Final touch of the right column part is the pagination. So let's add it. The show last attribute forces the show last page button to appear, which is not the default behavior. By the way, you have the same option for first, previous, or next, if you want to show or hide them. Pagination is working fine. Pretty nice for a one-line component. The main content is now finished. And that was the biggest part of the page, so congrats if you made it up to here. Let's move on to the sidebar now. We'll first import the refinement list component. Going to the sidebar component, adding a title for the refinement. Here we are enabling filtering on the category attribute. So now for the refinement list component itself. It simply takes in the name of the attribute you want to filter on. As you can see, refinement list works by letting you select multiple values for a specific facet. So now let's copy paste it for the next facet we want to filter on, brand. Here we are adding the with search box property to the component. That will allow us to search inside the values of the facet themselves to ease filtering when a lot of different values are available. Okay, one last widget and we're good to go. Let's import the menu component. Now we'll add it to the sidebar below our previous refinements, specifying the attribute name to filter on. Here, the type attribute. The difference from refinement list is that here you can select only one value at a time. And we're done. Now you can play with all the filtering combined. Hope you guys had fun experimenting with our library in this video guide. I sure had fun coding it in front of you. Obviously we've only scratched the surface here. We have a very complete documentation waiting for you at this URL. And we have a bunch of other guides coming up in that series too. So stay tuned. Cheers guys.